this next session is also, I think, one not to be missed. Um, Doug Voigt, um, our very own Doug Voigt, will be presenting it. One of the uh, one of the submissions that we got for this conference was for uh, one of the new buses that are being proposed. There's a, a class of, of interfaces, uh, Stephen Bates discussed them earlier. Um, there's Gen Z, there's um, uh, Open Copy, CCIS. CCIS. And um, the proposal was from uh, one of the advocates of one specific one. And um, I kind of led a discussion inside of SNEA that it's really premature. If we, if we showed one of them but not all three of them, it would be premature. It'd be, you know, basically SNEA saying that this is the winner. There's, you know, these three buses, I mean, uh, I'm going to get myself in a little bit of trouble here, but if you, if you squint a little bit back up, you know, they're, they look very, very similar. And I'll just leave it at that. And the, um, at this stage, we have not had a good technical discussion inside of, of CIA about, you know, would we support one over the other, et cetera. So what we did is uh, we, we actually asked that proposer if he thought he could, could represent all three um, objectively, and the answer was no. So we... Uh, <laughs> so I will valiantly attempt to do that. Um, but uh, uh, Doug has got... Uh, he said that he thinks he could do that. So this is well, this is a big deal. This is you know there's uh, new IOs being uh, uh, discussed. They provide you know um, combination of high IO bandwidth like we, we get on existing buses, um, uh, coherency like um, different architectures have you know dedicated coherent buses, and also uh, direct access to persistent memory. So at least you know some level of of memory interaction. And that's what I said when you squint and kind of look at them, they kind of, mostly all have those three characteristics. So, Doug is going to uh, come on up and lead us through this discussion. Yeah. This will be, this is brand new. We don't know where it's going to go, but I, neither do I. <laughs> uh, so I have my SNEA hat in hand, uh, you know, trying to do a, a vendor neutral description of something that's going on that could be kind of important. It's, it's related to persistent memory, uh, but it's not entirely about persistent memory. Um, yeah, clicker, infamous clicker. Um, the situation is that uh, in October, within a few weeks of each other, several consortia, open you know, consortia, were formed. Um, and each of them was based on content that had emerged from specific companies you know, and had gathered together partners with the intent of opening those specifications. So uh, that's, that's the situation with all of them. And then what happens is that the content of the specifications involved get contributed to the consortium, at which point the consortium is in charge of communication, and updates and you know in charge of the spec right uh, and, and that's as far as we've gotten at this point so there's public information you know and, and some of it's fairly limited on particular consortia and then the people that join those consortia get more information along with some level of commitment right so that's the situation so what i'm going to do is stick with the public information about these three um, and you've already heard their names. Um, I will try attempt to use the pointer. Yeah, uh, Gen Z, Open Copy, and C6. This is this, this is like a number, but it's not <laughs> C6. Um, so I've given the really short soundbite as to you know what what these things are, and, and that's a, a little tricky to do, partly because of the lack of deeper technical information available to the public. Um, and also because they're evolving, right? They're taking on more features. Uh, you know, in some cases, there have already been multiple versions before you know, moving into the consortium, right? So it's a little bit of a moving target. Uh, but Gen Z is, is a, uh, a memory fabric. It's intended uh, to operate at memory speed uh, as opposed to networking, you know, network speed. Um, by which I mean that, that you know, in, in most networks, 
to get through uh, switches that include some routing, you might be in the 300 nanosecond per hop, per switch range, or, or something like that. Whereas for a memory fabric, you want you know a lot lower than that, you know, under 100 micro, uh, no, nano. I'm sorry, I think I said it wrong. Uh, under 100 nanosecond delay, in, you know, in going through the fabric, so that the, the the order of latency is on the same order as the as a memory uh, as a memory access, right? So, so Gen Z is targeted at, at that realm. However, it also has the capability to scale to a rack scale, and as you do that, physics starts taking over. So, not everything is as fast as could be, right? So, there's this question of you know, at what scale can you use what features. You know, entered into the picture. Um, but as it relates to persistent memory, that you know, Gen Z would have the strength of being able to pull uh, persistent memory across uh, processors or or whole servers in a in a relatively tightly coupled, you know, let's say disaggregated uh, you know memory environment. Um, Open Cappy, uh, okay, Gen Z it is not inherently cache coherent. Um, it's more like a DDR or a PCI, neither of which is inherently cache coherent. A subtle point is the cache coherency that you normally get with memory through DDR is not because of the memory or the DDR, it's because of the processor. Right? So don't forget that. <laughs> it's kind of a tricky point. Um, but OpenCAPI, on the other hand, is all about cache coherency, and in particular, at the same time that we're seeing the persistent memory emerge, we're also seeing uh, progress on analytics and the ability to do, you know, GPUs, accelerators, um, out, outside of the processor uh, and apply them to analytics, right? Um, so the strength of, of OpenCAPI is actually for integrating accelerators into the application address space. Um, and that can be relevant because uh, that gives the accelerators not only access to not only memory, but also persistent memory. And depending on how many of these things you use together, it may be pooled persistent memory. Right? So um, that brings in the accelerator dimension. C6 is, is similarly um, you know, adds cache coherency. Um, and I think at, at this stage, snapshot, it's a little hard to completely differentiate the value, you know, the value add of open capping and C6, at least for me. Uh, and looking at the public information, uh, C6 seems to you know seems to to emphasize you know kind of a peer environment among processors and accelerators with cache coherency protocols that are running throughout. Uh, and I'll elaborate. But whereas OpenCAPI emphasizes the ability of the accelerator to access persistent memory that's connected to the CPU. However, there's a bullet in OpenCAPI that says you can attach you know memory to the accelerator too, right? But I'm not sure what you can do with it, right? So there are people who know that, right? But I'm not one of them. <laughs> um, so I put it, to, to simplify this a little bit, I put here a, a reference model that everybody should recognize with three different kinds of, of interfaces, right? The PCI that is used today to talk to accelerator storage networking, you know, whether it's a NVMe or a, a host bus adapter, right? That's all, all here. Um, you know, DDR is used to talk to memory, uh, and then there, there's generally, if you're in a multi-socket system, there's some kind of architecture-specific inter-socket interface, uh, you know, that's, that's involved as well. So this is just kind of a reference model so that we can see what these things, you know, how these things affect it. So, specifically regarding Gen Z, uh, you know, here we see the, the so it's, it's here. It's, what, what's happened here is I've added memory to this, uh, you know, to what used to be PCI here, and I relabeled it Gen Z. Um, I stopped short of replacing DDR with Gen Z, but that, you know, Gen Z is theoretically capable of doing that. It's, it's designed to be able to do that, right? So one of the, the questions in play then is, uh, you know, if I have a, you know, uh, a memory fabric that can scale down and up effectively, then how will I use it? Which which interfaces over time in my system, you know, might it, you know, might it replace, if any, right? <laughs> now, um, <clears throat> we shouldn't get ahead ourselves in terms of imagining that one of these, you know, that a new interface like Gen Z can quickly replace something like DDR or PCI. That's that's 
a very long-term thing, right? That is being pragmatic, that's not something that would happen quickly. You know, the point is, though, that um, you know, with things like storage class memory, persistent memory emerging, the desire for a rack scale, the, the, the desegregation agenda, and the asymmetric behavior, you know, less the, the less synchronous behavior of storage class memory when, you know, in, a, in a memory system. Those are the kinds of things that motivated uh, Gen Z. So Gen Z views everything as memory. Um, you know, it's got load store, it's got put in get. Those are our larger bulk, uh, you know, move operations, our copy operations, and it's got atomics. Um, you know, it's got sub microsecond. In fact, uh, you know, on the order of 100 nanosecond uh, latencies. Um, you know, and it's not block based, right? It's it's designed to operate uh, essentially as memory cache line access. Uh, so that's the way Gen Z described now the, the, more, the public uh, picture, um, which is in some ways the same picture as my little architecture picture. Um, you know, it shows it this way. It shows there's still memory inside the SOC. That this system on chip, that's what the SOC stands for. It's, it's your you know, server. Um, you know, and then you've got Gen Z, which is capable of being the unified interface for everything else. Uh, you know, but as I said, just you know, be pragmatic about that, right? It's, it's kind of a, a design goal, right? But it's not something that I, you know, I would think would happen overnight. Uh, you know, here's where the uh, uh, 100 nanosecond is going here. Um, yeah, here, the sub 100 nanosecond load to use latency is the goal. Um, it's expected that this would be really good for our analytics, uh, you know, scalable memory pools, um, you know, and areas where you get special advantage from being able to, to access memory directly from these other elements, right? So one of the advantages of this style of architecture is that, uh, you know, whether it's your storage or network or accelerators, you know, they can access the memory directly. However, uh, you know, it may not be in a cache coherent manner, um, although you can layer a cache coherent protocol on top of Gen Z. Um, you know, so you may see multiple of these consortia operating in the same systems, right? They, they may be, you know, used interoperably. So um, that's kind of Gen Z in a nutshell. Um, <coughs> On to the next one uh, is Open Cappy. And here I've simply you know, illustrated a variation on my architecture diagram where I, uh, I, haven't, I, didn't, I didn't bother to show the, you know, the stuff other than the accelerator here. But Open Cappy <laughs> operates here you know, at a connection to the accelerator. Um, it, it uses PCIe as the underlying physical interface, but it also has options for higher speed physical interfaces. Um, and the, the, the memory management unit has, you know, has a way to export a cache coherency protocol so that the accelerator can access the CPU's memory uh, using virtual addresses, the virtual address space of the application. So if you have an application that wants to use a GPU and it's got things that, you know, map in its address space, right, instead of having to go jump through hoops in order to tell an accelerator what to do, what it memory to access, it can give its virtual address to the accelerator, and the accelerator is participating in the Open Cappy protocol so that it can actually have the memory, the MMU, interpret virtual addresses on its behalf. Right? So it makes it much easier for an application to offload work, right, to push work to the accelerator. Right? <laughs> you know, if it can say, I've got a data structure in memory, I want the accelerator to operate on that data structure, I give it the address. And it can use that virtual, you know, the, the application address directly. Uh, so that's the strength. That's the initial way that I've seen the open cabinet kind of sold. Um, uh, and um, what kind of accelerators, right? Maybe not just GPUs. Uh, you know, the this morning. Uh, well, okay. This is really a better part of the talk for CSIC. So let me just keep going on open cabinet for a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so here's a little more detail, um, you know, and, and I have found that there's this reference that, that you, know, you can attach memory uh, to an accelerator that's using OpenCAPI. 
uh, but I haven't found any detail about what open cap tilt you do with that. On the other hand, uh, this whole description is really about you know ways to get an advantage from enabling your accelerator to access uh, you know memory or persistent memory that's that's elsewhere in the system, right? So this is something that you could use in today's systems as layer in, or you could use it in a system that was also using Gen Z, perhaps as the capture coherency protocol that was writing on top of Gen Z. Uh, you know, so those are some examples of, of the way these things might permute. Um, C6 is generally illustrated more like this. I took my my architecture picture and, and put this kind of more uh, you know peer-like you know C6 symbol in the middle of it. Uh, this is more the way it's sold: is that you've got accelerators with memory and processors with memory, and they can all use C6 uh, you know to get cache coherency kind of globally. Uh, they're, they're they're potentially peers in this environment. Um, and I debated whether to leave my, uh, you know, uh, inter interprocessor interface over here, which is one of the interesting outstanding questions in my view, because if I've got something like C6, does it replace my historical interprocessor interface or not? I don't actually, I don't know. Right? It's too early to tell. But it, does, it seemed kind of interesting to me to have multiple peer-to-peer -peer cache coherent domains. You know, there, obviously there has to be some kind of way to tie them together. And, and uh, I'm sure these protocols use the MMU to do that, right? So that's one of the, the kind of interesting open questions architecturally is, how many of these things do I need, right? <laughs> Which ones? I don't know, actually. Um, so C6 is positioned, still uses uh, PCIe physical uh, or better. Uh, it still creates a shared address space, uh, but it's, it's sold as a more sort of peer-to-peer you know, uh, accelerator and processor wide uh, environment. And here's where I was going to make the comment that this morning um, it was talked about that you might want to move functionality closer to memory, right? It was uh, a compare or something like that as part of a search or, you know, that sort of thing. So, so here's an example of, of, you know, a beneficial use of something like C6 or probably even, probably also open capital, to say. You know, I've got uh, you know functionality here in my accelerator, which also has persistent memory in it, right? And I can run a cache coherent environment with multiple of these and my CPU using something like C6, right? So it gives you that scalability factor when you're pushing functionality out to accelerators, right? So both C6 and OpenCAPI have some degree of that. OpenCAPI is is sold right now, at least in the collateral I've seen is emphasizing an accelerator accessing the CPU now, right? Whereas C6 is sold more peer-to-peer, -peer, right? With a bunch of processors and accelerators all together, right? In a cache computer environment. Um, so, to review. <laughs> um, you know, the Gen Z is more about persistent memory pooling. It's a memory speed uh, you know, fabric really not directed at networks. Everything looks like memory to Gen Z. Uh, Open CAPI, uh, you know, is, is cache coherent protocol for accelerators, and C6 is, is another cache coherent protocol, uh, you know, for, for more peer-to-peer -peer oriented accelerator or processor. So the system architecture questions that, that this raises is, if I've got what has historically been my PCI interface here, is, you know, when is it cache coherent? Right, um, and the second question is: I, I, I have this grayed out DDR line that used to connect memory to the MMU. Can it be combined? Right. Um, so to me, those are some interesting long-term system architecture questions that are raised by this, this emergence of these new proposals. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Doug. So, um,